the world of off-roaders, there's not a lot of hidden gems. You've got the Jeeps and the Toyotas of the world, and then you got some weird stuff like a Suzu's, and then of course Nissan, but there's not a lot of undiscovered gems of four-wheel drive vehicles. But in this video, I'm gonna introduce you to another one. An insanely cheap, an insanely cool, forgotten vehicle. The first generation Kia Sorento. Please don't click out. I know I've got one minute before you leave this video forever, but hear me out. This Sorento does look like a blob. It's not a good looking vehicle. However, unlike just about every other blobby SUV of the early 2000s, the Sorento is a body on frame vehicle. This isn't even a unibody. It's got a body on top of a stiff steel frame. Now out back, you're not gonna find some kind of weenie little independent suspension in the first gen Sorento. These things used a beefy solid axle, just like a pickup truck of modern day. And that's not even the best part. These first gen Sorentos were a genuine four wheel drive with two high, four high, and four low settings on the transfer case. That's right, a transfer case in a first generation Kia Sorento. So now that I probably have some of your attention, let's keep talking about why these things are so incredibly cool. When Kia introduced the first gen Sorento all the way back in 2002, they weren't going after what we consider small unibody crossovers of today. They were going after vehicles like the Jeep Grand Cherokee. And as such, Kia felt like they had to add a lot of off-road goodness to the vehicle. So not only does it have the body and frame, the solid axle and the transfer case, it also has recovery points. And not just one in the front, not just one in the rear, four of them, two in the front and two in the back, which is more than like a brand new forerunner in some instances. They also added skid plates in the front and on the fuel tank. It also has 8.2 inches of ground clearance and out back, the solid axle has a Eaton limited slip rear diff. Now under the hood of the Sorento, you'll find a 3.5 liter V6, dual overhead cams, 24 valves, a horsepower and torque on the early ones was like 192 horsepower, 217 pound feet of torque. So not a hugely powerful engine, not a hugely powerful platform. And the towing capacity was pretty far down compared to like the Grand Cherokee, only 3,500 pounds. But that isn't even the best part about this vehicle. Wait till you see what's inside. Believe it or not, you could get the first generation Sorento with a manual transmission. Imagine that. It's 2022 and these things are pretty much completely dead in any vehicle, but back in the early 2000s, you could get a manual in a mid-size crossover designed to compete with the Toyota Highlander, which is just absolutely absurd. Uh, of course, only five gears, but manual transmission, low range, four wheel drive. Is there anything wrong with them? The biggest issue with the Sorento is nothing to do with the vehicle itself. It's just the fact that in 2022, they're pretty much completely used up. These things were cheap when they were new and then they got insanely cheap and now they're even more insanely cheap and pretty much every single one of these has a crazy amount of deferred maintenance. So it's really, 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 really hard to find a good one, let alone one with a manual transmission. So very hard cars to find, but if you can find a good one, you can pick them up for like five, six grand, right? Not a lot of money. And they're actually really quite reliable. There's not a whole lot to break. The 3.5 liter V6s, they're a little boring, but they seem to last a long time. You can often get 200,000 miles out of these cars with pretty little difficulty. So yes, they do look blobby. They're insanely cool and almost impossible to buy used. All right, Brenton, thanks for coming down again, hey, buddy. Good to see you. Really appreciate it. So this is your Sorento, yep. um, and we gotta talk about the chicken. Why the chicken here? <laughs> uh, well, that's the uh, prize to my least expensive vehicle that I currently own. Well, the Sorentos <laughs> are certainly affordable. Yep. And this one is certainly affordable for a couple of reasons, because um, it's a little rough, but that's what you want in an off-roader, right? If yep. you're gonna go bounce it around on some rocks and logs. Exactly. So, let's start it up. That's a, that's a little... Modified exhaust. <laughs> I think it probably is self-modified itself, yeah, huh? Probably. <laughs> so let's go ahead and go into four-wheel drive low. So we're in uh, neutral here, goes into four-wheel drive, and then it'll kick into low range too, which I think is a pretty cool thing about this. Yeah. Uh, I can't get over how weird it is driving a small, a small crossover with a manual transmission. I know, I'm I'm a sucker for cars you wouldn't think are in manuals. <laughs> and I, even I didn't know that you could find like something like this in a manual transmission. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. So we've gone into four wheel drive and we're gonna start out at Holes Street. And this is our nice articulation section. Basically, we get the various wheels and holes and see if we have the ground clearance to make it out. Man, clearly I've gotta work on my manual transmission skills. Gotta put it in gear to drive. <laughs> 
There we go. All right. Oh, did you hear that clunk? That's four-wheel yeah. drive low, baby. There we go. Here we go. Diving into holes. Let's see how she does. Gonna take it nice and easy. Oh, not bad. Wow, look at that. <laughs> Dude! <laughs> oh! It's just plowing right through it. <laughs> <laughs> that was freaking awesome. So in low range, first gear, we actually have plenty of low end torque to even get us through holes. Yeah. That was pretty good. Who needs a V8, right? Who needs a V8? Well, <laughs> all right, so going into second. Now the transmission is a little sloppy, but the clutch feels pretty good, actually, yep. for what it is. And when you're dealing with these rare manuals, it's not like you have a lot of a lot of choice, right? <laughs> yeah. Kind of get what you get. Let's see if let's see if the, the mighty Kia can make it up logs. Ooh. First time driving a manual transmission through here. The sound is pretty funny, <laughs> I have to admit. Now this has a torsion beam independent front suspension. Man. We did it! She's bumpy, but she's making it. We did it, dude! <laughs> Freaking killer! So yeah, not quite as much control as like a, a Wrangler with the manual. <laughs> right. I didn't want to ride your clutch, but yeah, just let the clutch out and let it kind of bounce up anything. Nice. I do like the size of this though. I mean, this was considered a mid-size back in the day. By modern day standards, it's tiny. So next up, we've got rocks and we're gonna see how the first gen Sorento tackles our rocks course. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this puppy around and um, this is putting it all together. So it's got, um, you know, test of ground clearance, test of traction, test of suspension. And actually we've renamed rocks. It's now yeah, yeah. Boulder Boulevard. And that oh, was yeah. thanks to you in the comments. <laughs> and you put these all-terrainy tires on here too, right? Yeah. It's the one little touch I got to add, I guess. <laughs> Man, pretty good AC. Yeah. For what it's worth. Come on, Kia! I can't believe I'm saying that. <laughs> Dude! The mighty Kia! Wow. Absolutely crushed it. Man. All right, we gotta go harder. Let's go try, uh, let's go ahead and try the uh, the trenches. All right. You good with that? I remember your uh, your excursion struggled a little there. Well, my excursion failed at yeah. this. <laughs> let's see how it performs out here. I'm not sure that limited slip is doing a whole lot anymore. No, it doesn't seem like it. All right, there's only no. one thing for it. We'll take it with a little bit of momentum. So when in doubt, cheat. <laughs> and in any other vehicle, you'd be worried about it, but in an affordable Kia, give it a go, right? Go for it. All right, we'll give it some throttle. There we go, next one. <laughs> <laughs> There you have it, dude. Man, throw a limited slip in this thing and it'll conquer all of it. <laughs> so throw a locker back there. I don't know yeah. if anyone does a Kia locker, but that'd be pretty cool. All right, last, last, last course. Let's go ahead and try the, um, let's go ahead and try the, uh, what are we calling these? The mounds. Drives pretty well for having 188,000. It's a little bit of a whine coming from the power steering, but you know. Yeah. Kind of to be expected. It's a, it's a little bit of a project. Yeah, it's a little bit of a project. But for somebody that wants a dirt cheap off-roader that's kind of off the beaten radar. Kind of hard to beat. Kind of hard to beat. That's what I'm saying. All right, we may run out of ground clearance here, admittedly. Oh, wow. Look at that. Dude. Right over it. All right, a little bit there at the end, but the mighty Kia. <laughs> I'm so impressed with this thing. <laughs> Wow, you know, it's a little smoky and it does have an exhaust leak, but it went <laughs> everywhere that a lot of modern day crossovers does for a tenth of the price. I think that exhaust kind of makes it a little more appealing, honestly. I mean, it does, <laughs> does add some interest to it. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, thank you for bringing this hey, thing by. my pleasure, Tom. Appreciate it. Uh, this was a ton of fun. Uh, I hope you guys learned something, because I certainly did, that uh, key is from 20 years ago. Who knew? Kind of badass. Yeah. Remember what I said about finding a good one? Well, it's really hard to find a good one. This one is actually pretty clean as the rentals go. And even this one, if you uh, take a look at the seats, yeah, that's not a mouse that did that. That was probably about 20 years worth of cigarettes. But apart from that, 
This one is remarkably intact, so it's got 188,000 miles, and the interior on these are very basic. Now, there were, I think, two trims, the EX and the LX. This one is an EX, uh, but it's held up really quite well, so we've got this little small radio up here with six presets, lots and lots of blank buttons. This was a key, after all, from the early 2000s, but it does have air conditioning down here below, and then cubbies. That's pretty much the extent of the luxuries in this thing. Cruise control, no sunroof. <laughs> yeah, they're very basic interiors, but it, it actually has held up quite well. I mean, uh, there are no major um, issues with like the steering wheel. It looks pretty good. The dash isn't all cracked up. I think even the AC works on this, right? Which is, you know, that's a testament to how long these will last. So the Sorento, when you fold everything down, I think had like 66 cubic feet worth of space. Uh, this car was known for being a lot wider than its competition back in the day. Kind of an interesting tidbit. Now the rear seat's quite roomy. I'm six foot one. The seat is in a, is in a comfortable riding position for me and I've got a pretty good leg room and I actually have very good headroom in the back. Um, you got an ashtray back here, so of course your kids can smoke. And by the looks of it, they probably have in this one. Uh, <laughs> and then the cup holders are a little bit jammed in this model. But, um, you know, Kia back in the early 2000s, they, they got a lot of hate from folks like us who did the automotive media thing because sure, the interior quality wasn't as good as like some of the Toyota or Nissan products of the day. But for the price, you got a long lasting, durable vehicle, uh, which even, you know, 15, 20 years later, still has held up pretty well. So there you have it, the first generation Kia Sorento, a very cheap, affordable way to go off road that's not your usual Toyota or Nissan or Jeep. Of course, aftermarket community, practically zero. But you know, one of you out there could maybe even start one based on this video, how cool would that be? If you want this very Sorento, it's going up for sale on our new auction site, TFL Bids, a link in the description below. You'd be the only person on the trail with a manual transmission, low range Kia on all terrain tires. So guys, let me know what you think in the comments section below. And as always, a huge thank you to Brendan for bringing by these cool and quirky classics.